Things that I learned at Stonehill are so important to what I do today, whether it's my work that's done internally at the medical examiner's office or on the public facing side of our operations when I go to testify. I don't think there's any aspect of my work that doesn't involve communicating and having to do it well. These are things that are important at Stonehill, but these are also things that align with the cornerstones of science, because when we think of science, we think of the pursuit of truth. We think of open communication, open dialogue, compassion. These cornerstones of science, these are things that also align with Stonehill's vision. And so I think, you know, in that way, Stonehill was the perfect fit for me as a rising forensic scientist, as an aspiring forensic scientist, because I found in Stonehill the values that I wanted to instill in myself as a future scientist. At the World Trade Center Memorial in New York City, there is a repository where all the remains that have yet to be identified and are not currently undergoing testing are stored. These remains sit behind a wall and on that wall there's a phrase by Virgil, which says, no day shall erase you from the memory of time. And every time I'm there and I look at that wall, I think to myself how true that is. Officially, there were 2,753 people that perished when the towers collapsed. We've been able to identify about 1,600 of those people, some through DNA testing, some through other means of ID. But that still means that there is 1,100 victims that remain unidentified. I don't know if there's any other agency in the world that would make the kind of commitment that we've made to these families. That is like 20, 30 years, could be 50 years, could be 100 years. We're never gonna stop trying until we've identified everybody that perished that day. We're not just doing this because it's our job. We are doing this because there's a face behind every case. There's a person behind every case. So we care about the families and the victims that have suffered, but we also want them to know that this is something we take personally too. This tragedy is something that has touched members of our staff. My cousin Joseph Enchandia was 27 years old. He was working on the 104th floor of the South Tower on September 11th. And that's something that's been challenging for members of my family, my aunt and uncle, when we lost Joseph that day. I think about all the knowledge that I've been able to accumulate over the years. There's so many things I could have done with my background. I was a biochemistry major at Stonehill. I was a forensic science major in graduate school. There's an infinite number of things I could have done and an infinite number of places I could have ended up working. And I think it's somewhat coincidental, and you might even say fate, that I ended up working at the very office that's charged with identifying the remains from a disaster in which my cousin perished. I know me and my family have to just step back and absorb that and think like, of all the places I could have ended up, this is where I am. And it just so happens that I'm one of the scientists that could one day be responsible for bringing closure to my own family because Joseph has never been identified. He's one of the 1,100 people that have still been unidentified. I think it's important for us to to have a way of remembering what happened that day and to keep that event in our minds and to let those who have been personally affected by it know that it's still something that we remember and we're doing everything we can to ease their pain and ease their grief.